another Sunday, another Husker 24-7 emergency podcast. Uh, I'm Michael Brunst. That's Brian Christofferson. Um, Sunday afternoon, a little news broke. Eric Chenander out as Nebraska's defensive coordinator. That follows exactly one week after Scott Frost was let go as head coach and Mickey Joseph was installed as interim head coach. Uh, Mickey Joseph making his first coaching change as uh, interim head coach as Nebraska heads to the bye week. Brian, um, first reaction when you heard the news and were you expecting to be podcasting with me today, given how things went yesterday against Oklahoma? Um, no. I mean, I always enjoy podcasting with you, although I don't, I don't enjoy when people lose their jobs. No. I mean, it, you know, I don't, I don't like that part. And uh, Eric Shenander's a stand-up guy, and is he'll have a lot of success in his coaching career as he goes forward. But the reason I didn't think it was going to happen today is sort of what Mickey said afterwards, and he did. He the way he phrased it, I guess, left open the door. He said, "I don't." He was asked, do you foresee any changes right now? And he says, I don't know right now, maybe tomorrow, but not right now. But it, even the way he said it, I it was more so like, no, I don't think so. That's how I kind of took it. Um, and I think a lot of people did. Uh, but, you know, you go back, you watch the film. It was pretty, pretty uh, brutal. And uh, we also don't know what conversations happen behind the scenes. If everybody's, you know, you're trying to fix something on the fly. It's very difficult you probably have, uh, you know, different input from people and maybe different insights on what needs to happen. And maybe, it, you know, it's a case where it, it's just like we got to just try something new here. And Mickey only gets one crack at it. Right. You know, at, at trying to win this job. And so if he's going to take a, a home run cut, um, he's got to do anything he can this week to sort of fix it behind the scenes. Yeah, it, and, and that is kind of what I keep coming back to, your point about that there's a tension right now, I think, between the fact that you have eight games left in this season, you, you've only played one Big Ten game at this point, and the, the feeling is, I think, in those walls that they can still get something done in terms of potential bowl game or kind of get the ship righted a little bit, especially with a bye week kind of teeing off into that really – key stretch of games against um, Indiana Rutgers and Purdue. At the same time, you have Mickey Joseph over here who essentially has a nine game um, job interview or an opportunity to show what he can do as a head coach. And, you know, I can see from his point of view where the way the first four games have played out, I don't really know, you know, what wholesale changes Eric Chenander would be able to make as defensive coordinator to, kind of allow for Mickey's best swing at at getting his name in in the mix for potentially being the head coach at Nebraska. So I think in some ways he kind of had to make a move. And in some ways I think too, Brian, that the, the move of, of installing Bill Bush as as the new defensive coordinator, it's kind of, you know, what Trev Alberts did by firing Scott Frost so early as you're trying to change the energy give a little bit of a boost somehow. Um, and and I, I think that's kind of how I look at it as well. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, and here's the thing, you know, it, no matter what you've done in the past, <clears throat> if your defense after four games is ranked, I'm looking at the numbers here, 128th in total defense out of 131 FBS teams, um, 114th in scoring defense, 115th in pass defense, 123rd and third down defense, 124th and rushing defense. Every stat that matters is bottom of the barrel. And uh, they haven't played great teams either. Uh, Oklahoma is a pretty good team, but <laughs> Northwestern got beat, you know, by Southern Illinois uh, yesterday. And, uh, oh, by the way, Georgia Southern lost yesterday too uh, to UAB. So, I mean, these, these, these aren't dynamic squads that have been carving up Nebraska until yesterday. Um, And to be frank, Oklahoma could have had 750 yards in that game. If they wanted, they did Nebraska a service. Um, That game was 49 to seven, six minutes in the third quarter. It could have been 77 to 10 if Oklahoma had wanted it to be. And so um, they were spared in that way, but uh 
I can understand when the numbers are that ugly where you say, uh, we got to do something. Now, the question is, how is he going to sort of move the pieces around on his staff, right? Like, what do you do with special teams, um, which Bush has been in charge of? Um, Mickey's going to talk to the media on Tuesday late morning, so there'll be this will be the big topic. But uh, that'll be an interesting part, too, is how you wiggle stuff around now. So when, when Mickey addressed – the media after the, the loss on Saturday, he, he mentioned a number of things that he wanted to kind of work on apart from, you know, the changes of, of coaches. More tackling is what he said. Um, he said multiple times that they want to really fine tooth comb everything and see if there's personnel that they've missed that can help them or provide a little bit of a boost um, going into kind of the, the, you know, back two thirds of the season F- from your perspective. I mean, what, what can Nebraska really get done here to make those numbers that you just read off, um, you know, kind of start to trend the other way a little bit. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I, I think a bye week is great, but I mean, what Mickey was laying out was that essentially it was going to be a, a little bit of an accelerated fall camp with a lot of individual drill work. I mean, that's kind of the stuff that, yeah. You hope you would have had taken care of uh, back in <clears throat> August. It's a pretty, pretty uh, big hill they're climbing up here. I mean, there's just no way around it. It's it. It feels like um, it's, you know, if if this were like a Kentucky Derby, which I, I know uh, Bill Bush is a big horse racing fan, you know, the odds of Nebraska like turning this around where it's even like a five win season or something to me at this point. I would be like, it's 150 to one or higher than that. Like, it just feels like that that's what you're, you're going with. I think he's right in that they got to go to the drill work um, because if this is a team that just it lacks fundamentals and some of the, you know, the technique you see with their tackling and stuff like that. And his point was, if you can't do the drill work, you can't do the teamwork. Your teamwork's going to suck. You know, if, if your, if your drill work does, um, so, so I get that point as for, for, as far as personnel moves, I don't think there's easy fixes. I think may I, you could throw out some names, like maybe do you want to see a little more like Jamari Butler, Blaze Gunnerson type guys? Um, maybe a little more Deshaun Singleton who popped up in that game at safety, uh, for Miles Farmer at some point. Uh, you don't want to just take away a young guy with a lot of talent, like Tommy Hill's um, confidence necessarily. But I think you got to let it be known. You're going to have to step it up. There might be some other guys who get those snaps too. Um, And it, it, you know, Braxton Clark was in there a little bit. He's a veteran guy, but I think all positions have to be open. And um, it doesn't matter if you're um, Ty Robinson or Garrett Nelson or Luke Reimer, whoever you may be your job has to be considered up in the air right now. And those guys should think of it that way too. I don't think that should be like some, uh, and I think a guy like Garrett Nelson would think of it that way. Like this isn't good enough. And if it's not good enough, um, you might have to start giving some reps to some other guys. I was surprised at the amount of rotation that they were doing yesterday, even before the, the game really got out of hand. I mean, when, Oklahoma finally called off the dogs and it was obvious that, you know, they were going to basically just going to run out the clock. I, you know, Nebraska did a ton of rotating in that secondary. You saw a lot of guys pulled, put back in. Um, defensive line was shuffling quite a bit, not so much a linebacker, but I, I, I don't know if that's, you know, them trying to just give guys more of looks or, or what, but it seemed to me that there was a lot more rotations, both, both on mm-hmm. defense and I mean, the offensive line was, you know, rotating quite a bit too. Um, I mean, those are two units that have obviously had their struggles this year, but I, I that struck me that, that they were really trying to, you know, get a, get a look at Deshaun Singleton for the first time. I mean, he, he had hardly played through the first yeah. three games. Um, you know, I, we hadn't seen much of Braxton Clark at all. Quentin Newsom had hardly left the field. So I, I, I think, uh, that was at least notable to me that they were doing that much shifting moving. Yeah. I mean, it, it felt like they'd reached the can't get any worse. Can it part, you know, where like, I mean, they're, they're going down the field in five or six plays 
no matter what how many yards they got to cover against this group, you got to at least see some other options and give them their crack. And it's you got to do that as a service, I think, to your roster because you you know you've got these guys who work every day and they're sitting there like, okay, I can't get a chance to get out there uh, when the, when these guys are getting shredded. And back to the previous comment, I said I I, I want to be careful. Like I don't, I'm not saying they should just bench this guy and that guy. I don't think that usually works out like everybody wants it to like, you know, it's not a video game. And usually guy coaches who have seen all these players every day for a long time, that it tends to prove out there's a reason why this guy was on the field over that guy. But that's what's so concerning is that you've, you had a defense that five weeks ago heading to Dublin um, and we bought it. I, I took the hook right there and I went with it. And uh, Eric Chenander and those guys, they thought they were going to be pretty good. I really believe that. And then they were just absolutely stunned with how Northwestern just ripped through them. And, you know, you for a week or so, you're kind of like, that's that's probably going to be a really bad omen. But maybe maybe Northwestern's got something going on offense this year, you know. And uh, it turns out everybody's doing that to Nebraska. And Northwestern has lost two games since then. So if, if that was like the fleeting thought of like hope, you can you can uh, scrub that away. Do you, do you think that this is a defense that is just – because, I mean, in Eric Chenander's first four years, I mean, they had generally been trending in a positive direction. Um, I mean, we all remember where Nebraska's defense was in 2017. Um, you know, gradual improvement over – the next few seasons, do, do you get the sense that this is a defense that is just badly missing and, and not just one guy? The, the, they're missing Jojo Doman. I, I think they're missing Ben Stilley and Damian Daniels a heck of a lot more. I mean, we, we knew that was going to be an issue, but I think that's really kind of borne itself out. And and then the, the two safeties. I mean, I, I think Deontay Williams and Markel Dismuke, um, probably didn't get the credit they deserve for the work that they were doing on the back end of that defense the last few years. Uh, they're missing six so six really good guys. If you count Cam Taylor, Britt, the two safeties, Doman, two guys up front, Damian Daniels. We, I mean, I think on this, uh, on our network, we've always thought like he was a, a more important to last year's crew than, yeah. than is sometimes recognized. And that's proving out Ben Stilley, who it, Ben Stilley's an example, was an example, one of those guys who, because he played so long in the program, you kind of take for granted as just being solid. Like, because you're like, oh, he's not first team this or whatever. And so you kind of, people knock him to the side. And he was a big 10 D lineman. And that's why, is he on the travel or the practice squad or whatever? I mean, he almost made the 53 yeah. um, in the NFL. So that's the type of player he is. Um so that's the majority of your defense last year. Um, six guys gone, played almost all, you know, and Doman in the safeties case has basically played all the snaps. Cam Taylor Britt, same thing. Um, that's pretty tricky to replace. Um, I will say this too, before because I know this is when these things happen, and in, this year it's very easy easy to take the hammer to a guy like Chenander and act like he doesn't know a thing, which is very popular, you know, when a guy's having a bad season. I think he's a good football coach. I don't forget that last year, yes, he had veteran guys, but they held Michigan State without a first down, you know, in that game. So it it goes to show you how – quick things can move in this business and even guys who I think have good coaching minds um, it can go sideways in a hurry and you just can't have and when you're in the middle of it it's very hard to find the answer like when you're in the middle of the storm sometimes so we will enter the bye week with Bill Bush as your new uh, acting defensive coordinator for the rest of the season uh, looking to find answers there uh, Mickey Joseph talks uh, Tuesday morning and We'll have everything on Husker 24-7 about uh, the changes, uh, the bye week, uh, recruiting, uh, whatever else pops up this week with the coaching search. You'll find it all there at Husker 24-7. Uh, so get to the website. Thanks for listening. We'll be back with uh, two more podcasts this week.